Hi, Sam. How are you doing? Do you mind if we ask you a few questions? No, I'm doing great. No problem at all. What is, what is your major? I'm aerospace engineering. And where are you from? I'm from Tampa, Florida, but I was born in Chicago, Illinois. And so what made you choose to attend UT? Well, aerospace engineering here is top 10, so I had to go. And what are, your, what are some of your favorite classes that you've taken at UT and why? I would say uh, any type of dynamics class. So spacecraft dynamics, low speed aerodynamics. Um, I just love being a dynamicist, I guess. Awesome. What's your favorite place to study? Mm. This is a very controversial choice, but I would have to say the PMA library. I love the planet posters. All right. And what do you like to do in your free time? Say I love to play the piano. I like playing waltzes by Chopin and Tchaikovsky, but I'm also part of a sorority, so I love meeting with my friends there. Fun. Who do you draw inspiration from the most in the space field? I grew up watching shows about different um, astrophysicists, so I would probably have to say Stephen Hawking. All right. And what do you consider your greatest achievement in college so far? Becoming director of operations in Trump. All right, and uh, where do you see yourself in five years? Hmm. Um, I would say probably mission planning for different space instrumentation, like satellites. Amazing. Can I ask you a few more questions about Trail? Yeah, go for it. What made you join Trail? Uh, you know, after hearing their mission about building a rocket based on liquid propulsion, I knew that was going to be just really the innovative technique of rocketry in college, and that would provide me such a... I guess, more advanced education in the aerospace industry. So um, I had to join. I was really up for it, I guess. Absolutely. And what uh, what is your role in Trail currently? Um, I'm director of operations. So I lead operations and project management. I oversee some of the technical progress of our teams. And I also work with business and outreach and uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion teams. That's awesome. How did you get into that role? So I started as a flightway uh, fluid systems engineer, and I loved that, but then I was uh, put into leadership leading all of our fluids testing campaigns. I did that for a year, um, but I always kind of knew I wanted to see the bigger picture uh, of rocketry and essentially building technology to lead space missions, and so that's where I kind of led interest into operations. Wow. What is your favorite aspect about the operations team? I love being... Uh, I think interfacing with as many people um, as possible. I love engineering, I love doing technical work, but I think I'm a people person as well. And being able to talk to people about how their teams are doing, how they're progressing, and seeing how different projects assemble together for stage and launch is super interesting to me. And could you give us a quick overview of the different functions of the ops team? Yeah, for sure. So uh, kind of what I explained before is I lead a lot of the project management. Um, so I look at deadlines, progress of each team, and see how they kind of come together concurrently for our stage and launch. Also, I look at uh, requirement writing with our chief engineer. I see if those are up to date, if there's anything that needs to be changed. I also work with outreach and our diversity, equity, and inclusion teams to build um, a great community here at Trail and just making it an inclusive environment um, so we can better the engineering process. Wow, sounds like there's a lot of functions. How do you track the progress of Halcyon while maintaining all those other responsibilities? Yeah, it's a lot, and so I do a lot of delegation. Um, but basically, I have an integrated master schedule that I work with um, project managers on. So that's how we upkeep our um, deadlines and our progress percentages. Um, but also, I just do a lot of documentation and requirements with our chief engineer, um, and then also delegating like different tasks that need to be done with our technical directors and sub-teams. Wow, that sounds like a lot. So what are some of the other favorite teams that you like to work with in Trail? Other than Ops, of course. I love fluids, because that's where I started. So I love uh, just working on projects uh, Sneaking in whenever I have time or whenever I can. Um, we recently did a mentorship series on um, just different fluids principles uh, and also fluids tests that we're planning to do for like our bank bank control system um, for our rocket. So I've really enjoyed being able to extend my knowledge to the new members of the team. So can you tell yourself? You just mentioned you like you were on fluids. So can you tell can you tell us why you consider yourself a fluids enthusiast? Ooh. Um, I actually never thought that I would initially like doing fluids work. I applied to Trell um, as a GNC engineer. 
guidance navigation control. Wow. Um, I missed that interview though. So <laughs> <laughs> by accident, it totally went to my spam. I didn't see it. Um, so I applied for fluids and I fell in love with how, um, I guess the diverse the field is. I mean, you can go into simulation work. We use GFSSP as a simulation model. You can go into calculations, hand calcs, um, but you can also go into the design work, like through CADing um, and integration with structures and propulsion. And so it's a very variable field, just super interesting. Wow, thank you for sh shedding some light on fluids. Now, could you, uh, could you tell us a couple of the big things that Ops is currently working on? Yeah, so we're looking to migrate to uh, requirement software. We're currently using Excel, which is good for now, but it's super hard to keep track of, of all the information. So we're looking to build partnerships there. Um, we're also looking to uh, create more visibility for our team leads with our integrated master schedule so they can keep track uh, more easily and more consistently with their deadlines and how their tasks integrate with other uh, sub teams. So. Wow, sounds like Ops is a very important team. Could you tell us what trial would look like without ops? Ooh, um, I would have to say it would become very uncoordinated and uh, spiral um, out of control pretty quickly. We're kind of the glue that keeps all the teams together and makes sure that things get done when they need to get done. Um, we also make sure that design changes from one team get translated to necessary teams. So if one team doesn't know a design change that affects another subsystem, um, Basically, there's a whole lot of work done for nothing um, and a lot more time being spent. Speaking of being the glue of Trell, how do you go about planning for a GM or a general meeting? Yeah, it's a lot of work, um, but I work with our technical directors to give us technical updates to present to the lab. We also go into detail, like, working with specific teams if they can present the findings and like general status of their team so we can excite members and just kind of increase knowledge about what other sub teams and subsystems exist out of their own. I think that's really the big initiative I'm trying to work on is creating a greater awareness of, you know, what other teams lie beyond a members that they're currently on um, and seeing how their project may integrate into something much bigger. Absolutely. So you mentioned that it's a lot of hard work. Could you tell us about the hardest aspect of your role in trail right now? You know, communicating with people, I love it, but sometimes things get lost in translation and it's really hard to maintain so many lines of communication since I'm in so many disciplines um, within the lab. And so being able to kind of upkeep those lanes and make sure there's progress being done consistently is a lot of mental um, space, I would say. Absolutely. And since you're communicating on a daily basis with so many engineers, how hard is it to maintain those communications and keep those lines open? You know, Trell is filled with passionate students, and so it really isn't that difficult in the long run. I mean, everybody who wants to be part of this uh, this plan and this project is more than willing to, and um, upkeeping those responsibilities. So, yeah. And what's your favorite part no, okay, about the House Beyond Rocket? Like, I mean, that's a good, it's a good uh, idea. It would be nice if we could. Technically, I would have to say, um, once again, the fluids and propulsion systems. Um, we're kind of working on a pressure-fed engine system, uh, which is not like super innovative compared to companies, but it's super innovative compared to other collegiate labs. Um, so being able to see how students work through the problems from base level to seeing what industries can do um, is super cool, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Going back to the challenges of your current role, how do you stay motivated and productive during those challenging tasks? Um, I put my headphones on and I just play music and cancel all, all, all other um, distractions from the world. I sit in the trial room a lot. I kind of live there. Um, so that keeps me focused and seeing trial people and being able to interact with them keeps me excited about the mission, so. Awesome. As someone who's currently a leader in trial, what qualities do you believe make a great leader in ops? Somebody who is technically motivated, but also has good communication skills and good drive. Uh, I think both of those qualities are really necessary. Um, and sometimes it's hard to find them um, in conjunction with one another in a person. Um, so it really takes a unique person, I would say, to, to do the role. Um, yeah. Yeah, kind of building off that. How do you handle unexpected disruptions in your ops team? 
Uh, we, you know, have a straightforward process. We, I love meeting in person with my members and we get right to it. Um, so I like to just uh, be as efficient as possible with our communication. I delegate my tasks um, to like project managers and we just have a open flow conversation whenever we need to about the issue. Absolutely. So kind of going off that a little bit more, can you tell us about an obstacle you overcame in trial and how you overcame it? Yeah. Um, in operation sense, I would have to say risk management is a big issue that we have to worry about. I mean, technically you have all these systems coming about, but you have to worry about how they integrate with one another and what risks they pose schedule wise, operationally wise, maybe safety wise. And so creating a system where all of our members can engage and report risks, um, but also have them integrated in one place where we can prioritize and manage is something I'm still working on. Um, and getting that software to essentially have this as an easy process is uh, maybe one of the bigger challenges that I'm dealing with currently. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Sounds like sounds like there's a lot of challenges in being a leader here at Trail, but always room for growth. Yeah, for sure. So we're coming down to our last few questions. Awesome. So since you're a junior and you've been in Trail for three years, what has been your favorite part about watching Trail grow into the lab it is today? Um, just being able to build a community with all the other people here um, and learning about the differences in rocket science for people, like what it means for other people. So I've got to meet amazingly intelligent people in propulsion and fluids and also on our marketing team and our finance team. And, it's amazing to see all these bright minds come together and share their passion for space in the lab setting, so. Absolutely. And what do you aspire to do post-graduation? Um, well, I would love to be part of like a startup rocketry company. Um, this is kind of, you know, the era where all these different companies are coming together to innovate and compete um, in the space industry, which is really exciting. So I'd love to do that for a little bit, but then I think I'd like to go beyond that and work on different missions like satellites, instrumentation, telescopes, um, and be part of the higher level design planning and mission planning for that. That's amazing. Now we're getting into the last few personal questions here. So if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? I would say I would love to read people's minds, but I might not want to know that at times. I mean, that's kind of a double-edged sword. sword. Um, maybe that, because it's a very difficult question. I'll say that. Absolutely. Now, if you could only watch the same three movies for the rest of your life, what would they be and why? Hmm. I would say Good Will Hunting, Interstellar, and the sound of music. Um, Good Will Hunting because low-key I want to be him. Um, I want to go to MIT for graduate school um, and just work on really cool math. Uh, what else? Interstellar because I really think that it's more scientifically accurate than other movies. I mean obviously there's some inaccuracies <laughs> um, but I think the, the visualization of black holes and space and interstellar travel is just super cool. Um, and then Sound of Music, because it's just like a happy movie. I grew up on it, and I love music and singing, so. Yeah, three great movies you can't go wrong with there. For sure. <laughs> now, would you rather be trapped in a romantic comedy with your enemies, or trapped in a horror movie with your friends? Romantic comedy with my enemies. Like, I love a good rom-com. I'm definitely afraid of horror movies, so could not do that. Yeah. All right, last question. We know college is stressful, but what about on the surface of Mars? Can you tell us a little bit about your research? Ooh. Okay, so yeah, I have spent uh, the past three years researching global dust storm growth on Mars. So every five to seven years, you have these little dust storms that expand to global size, and they're really dangerous to missions like rovers. Like in 2018, the Opportunity rover completely shut down because it didn't get enough solar power because of dust in the atmosphere. So if we want to send humans there and other technologies, um, we have to forecast how these dust storms, uh, dust storms grow. And so my research is basically analyzing three different storm configurations in a region called Hellas Basin and how they expand and possibly interact with other storm systems to grow into global size. Wow, that sounds like some incredible work. Thank you. All right, well, that's all the questions we have. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you guys. I really appreciate it.